Hi, I'm Chef Thomas Reese, and I've been making sushi all around the country for the past 10 years. I am currently the head chef at Piranha Killer Sushi in Flower Mound, Texas. I'm here today at Central Market to show you just how easy it is to make sushi. We'll be taking an in-depth look at some of the fresh produce, some of the Japanese condiments and ingredients, as well as the sushi-grade fish. We'll then head up to the Central Market Kitchen, where I'll teach you how to make restaurant-quality sushi right in the comfort of your own home. I'm Alex, I'm the uh, seafood uh, production expert. I have all different sorts of uh, sushi grade products from salmon, the uh, tuna, comes in a block, barbecued eel, and the hamachi yellowtail. And the reason why they have to be kept frozen is state laws require it. So anything that's required by law uh, by the state of Texas to be considered sushi grade has to be kept frozen. Uh, so here we have the, uh, the premium grade sushi rice that we just purchased from Central Market. Um, there are instructions on the back of the bag that'll tell you how to either cook the rice in a rice cooker, and if you don't have a rice cooker, it'll also tell you how to cook it in a pot. We also have the uh, natural organic soy sauce. Um, for me, I always like to use the Kikomen brand. Uh, they're generally very good with the, the soy sauce. We also have the, uh, the rice vinegar. Now, uh, sushi rice vinegar usually consists of vinegar, salt, sugar, and kombu, which is the uh, dried seaweed. Um, luckily for us, Central Market sells the bottle where it's already pre-mixed, so that way you don't have to worry about mixing the right proportions of salt, sugar, and vinegar. Um, and once again, the instructions on how to mix this with the rice are right on the back of the uh, label here. We also have the, uh, the wasabi that comes in a tube. Um, it makes it real simple so that when you're ready to use the wasabi, you can literally just squeeze it like a tube of toothpaste and it'll come right out of the tube there. We have the, uh, the pickled ginger, which in this case it's the, uh, the pink pickled ginger. Um, sometimes you'll find the white ginger as well. There's really no difference in the color of the ginger as long as it's the pickled sushi ginger. So as you guys well know, Central Market carries a wide variety of sushi grade fish. Uh, they actually have a whole freezer section where they carry uh, the raw sushi grade fish. Now the, the fish does have to be frozen um, before they sell it. So when you buy the fish, it's going to come in frozen blocks. 
Now to properly thaw the fish, you want to place the frozen fish in your refrigerator 24 hours prior to using it. Um, that will allow the fish to naturally thaw in a cool environment. Uh, you really want to avoid thawing the fish uh, in the room temperature or running it underwater. Um, so careful planning and preparation does play a key role when you're handling the uh, sushi grade fish. Also the, the fish is somewhat expensive so you don't really want to do anything to compromise the quality of the raw fish itself. Uh, once the fish is thoroughly thawed in your refrigerator, you can go ahead and open up the package and you'll notice that there's a fair amount of juice and water left over uh, from the fish and uh, that's always going to happen with frozen packed fish. So what you want to do is you want to take a dry paper towel and just kind of pat the fish dry. Uh, you don't want to make it too dry where the fish um, loses its quality, but you just want to remove the excess moisture from the top layer of the fish. That way it doesn't leave a residual taste uh, in your mouth every time you take a bite. Um, also with the fish, uh, you want to keep it cold. So right before you, you're going to use the fish, you want to make sure that it stays in the refrigerator. Uh, you don't want the fish hanging out um, at room temperature for too long uh, because then the quality of the fish will be compromised and the taste will definitely be different as well. Now that we've finished all of our prep, we're ready to move on to making the sushi roll. So we have the uh, toasted seaweed here. Um, you'll notice that there's a rough side and a smooth side. You're always going to be placing the rice on the, uh, on the rough side. So to make a basic California roll, I'm going to first uh, kind of moisten my hands to create that separation from the sticky rice to my skin. And I'm going to grab the amount of rice that will be about the same shape and size of a pool ball. So after I have my pool ball shaped rice, I'm going to place it directly in the center of the toasted seaweed. Now I'm going to spread the rice across from the seaweed from one end to the other and I'm going to kind of create a hot dog shape with the rice. Once I've spread the rice, I'm actually going to divide this rice into two halves. Again, just using my fingertips, I'm going to gently press right in the center where I just placed the rice. This will divide it from the top to the bottom. From here, I'm going to use uh, my, my fingertips, primarily my thumbs, to push the top portion of the rice to the top portion of the seaweed. And again, I'm going to go from left to right. So I'm just going to gently press and push the rice away from my body, right to the top part of the seaweed there. And whatever I do to one side, I want to make sure I do the same thing to the other side. So I'm going to flip this around and again I'm just going to gently press with my fingertips pushing the rice away from my body. So now I've successfully put the rice onto the seaweed and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of the uh, toasted sesame seeds right on top of the rice. Okay, and since a California roll does have the rice on the outside, I'm going to be placing all the ingredients on the side of the seaweed. So I'm going to flip this over and I always start with the vegetables first and then put the meat on top very last. I'm going to start with the julienne cucumbers. And as you can see, I'm not directly placing the ingredients right in the middle of the seaweed. I'm placing them a little below the center part of the seaweed. Next, I'm going to do the avocado. I'm just going to take a regular butter knife here and I'm just going to cut into the avocado and that wedge of avocado should come right out. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to put the, uh, the meat right on top of the vegetables. In this case, it's the, uh, the, the crab stick that we got from uh, Central Market. And you don't want to put too much ingredients in the sushi roll, otherwise the sushi roll will break open on you. So since this uh, crab stick is fairly large, I'm just going to simply break it apart, kind of split it into two halves here. 
And again, I'm just kind of putting that on top of the vegetables and that's gonna kind of hold it all together. Now from this point, I'm gonna line up the bottom edge of the seaweed about an inch above the bottom edge of the bamboo mat. So as you can see, I have about a good inch right here from the bottom of the bamboo mat to the bottom of the seaweed. I'm gonna use my thumbs to lift up on the bottom edge of the bamboo mat, and I'm gonna use the rest of my fingertips to kind of hold the ingredients in place. So when I lift up, I'm gonna press and hold the ingredients, now the bamboo mat is gonna come up and over all the ingredients that I have in there. So once it completely covers the ingredients, I'm gonna gently press with my fingertips to kind of mold it and hold it all together into one spot. So if you're new to sushi, or if this is your first time making sushi rolls, I would uh, recommend just kind of lifting up the bamboo mat and just making sure that you're on target so that when you do make that rotation, that you will get a complete seal with the rice to the seaweed. And as you can see, I'm right on target. When I make that rotation, it's gonna create a spiral effect and it will hold all those ingredients in place. So again, I'm just gonna kinda tuck it and gently press it. Now from here, the, I always wanna have the bamboo mat above the sushi roll. I never wanna have it tucked underneath as I'm rolling the sushi. So again, always having the bamboo mat on top, I'm gonna use my fingertips and the bamboo mat to kind of guide the sushi roll so I can make that rotation. And from here, I can just kind of keep pulling on the bamboo mat and it'll kind of spin the sushi roll around a few times, uh, which will give you a really nice shape. So from here, I'm gonna kind of clean up the, uh, the edges of the California roll real quick. So what I do is I line the edge of the bamboo mat to the edge of the sushi roll. And I kind of tuck those extra ingredients back into the roll and square off the edge here. And again, what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other side as well. I'm going to tuck those ingredients back in, square off the end of the sushi roll. And now I'm ready to cut. Using your chef's knife, you want to make sure that you start out with a clean and lubricated knife. Uh, that's why I have this bowl of water here to create the separation from the blade from the sticky rice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to dip my knife right into the water. And I'm going to let that water drip all the way down the edge there. And that will be sufficient to keeping the, the sushi rice away from the blade. So I'm going to cut this sushi roll into half. And uh, I'm going to cut these halves into halves and the quarters into halves and that will give me eight even pieces for the sushi roll. Again, before each cut, you always wanna start out with a clean and lubricated knife. That will ensure that it's uh, easier to cut the sushi roll and your cuts are also a lot cleaner as well. Okay, after I've made uh, the, uh, the eight even pieces, I'm just gonna take the bamboo mat and gently lay it over the top of the sushi roll again. And I'm just gonna press and straighten out the roll because once you cut the roll, it kind of, uh, each piece kind of gets uh, misplaced. So uh, lining up the bamboo mat over the top will just kind of straighten out the roll once again. So after you have the roll straightened out, it's uh, time to plate the sushi roll. Now there are many different ways to, uh, to plate a sushi roll. I'm just gonna show you one basic idea, um, but this really comes down to personal preference here. The main idea is to be able to distinguish each piece of the sushi roll and each ingredient inside of each piece of the roll. So I'm gonna take the roll, I'm gonna separate the pieces, just kinda offset them from one another. Place this on the plate. And again, I'm just gonna offset these pieces here and that'll give me the uh, effect that I want. Okay, so as you can see, I have completely uh, made, cut, and plated the sushi roll. And if you're to look, you can see each individual piece of the sushi roll and you can see each ingredient inside of each piece. So you can tell we have the uh, cucumber, the avocado, and the crab meat. And it's, uh, and with the sushi, Every single piece of the sushi roll should look and taste 
just like the piece next to it. So you want pretty uniform pieces. You want to make sure that you get an even distribution of ingredients inside the roll as well. So the next thing I'll show you how to make is a hand roll. Uh, hand rolls are personal size sushi rolls. They're in the shape of an ice cream cone and they're actually eaten just like an ice cream cone too, from the top all the way to the bottom. Uh, what's nice about hand rolls is that you can make a whole bunch of them uh, very fast and they're kind of good for large parties because they're more or less appetizers that everyone can just kind of grab. Um, also the nice thing about hand rolls too is you can pretty much put anything inside of them. So if you're a vegetarian, uh, just even having some leftover vegetables can be used to make the, the sushi hand rolls. To, so to start out, we're going to start with the, uh, the half sheet of the toasted seaweed. Again, the rice is always going to go on the texturized side. Um, and for the hand rolls, you want to make sure that the uh, seaweed stays as dry as possible. Uh, once the seaweed gets wet, it starts to shrink and it doesn't look as nice and appetizing. So you want to make sure to start out that the seaweed is really dry. Uh, so I'm going to place it right on top of the bamboo mat again. Um, and since we are looking for a cone shape roll, we're going to make sure that when we put the rice onto the seaweed, we're going to create a triangle with the rice um, and that will give us the exact shape that we want. So to make the hand roll, we're going to use a lot less rice than we did for the California roll. Um, for the amount of rice that we're going to use, it's pretty much going to be the same size as a golf ball or a ping pong ball. So it is a fair amount of less rice than a traditional classic roll. So I have about a, a golf ball shape size amount of rice. I'm going to place that on the left portion of the seaweed. And again, I'm going to create a triangle or a V shape with the rice itself. Um, and that will um, in turn produce the cone shape once I start rolling this hand roll. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect uh, triangle as long as the basic shape is there. Okay, so I made the triangle. You can see that the triangle is not directly in the center of the seaweed. It's actually a little bit set to the left-hand side. Um, and that's important for when I'm rolling the, uh, the roll itself. So again, just like the, uh, the California roll, I'm going to start with my vegetables. In this case, I'm going to start with the julienne cucumbers. I'm going to put some of the julienne carrots in it. I'm going to use some of the uh, snow pea shoots. And again, when you're making a hand roll, you kind of want some of the ingredients to kind of stick up over the top. Um, so I'm going to kind of place these so that the shoots will be uh, visible for when you're eating the sushi roll. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, avocado inside. Just using the butter knife, gently pressing, removing the avocado. And since the hand roll isn't as big of a roll as the California roll, we don't need as much of ingredients to make this. So for this one, I'm just going to use a little bit less than half of a full crab stick. Place that right on top. So now there's two ways to roll this hand roll. One is to roll it uh, flat on the bamboo mat, and the other way is to actually roll it in your hand. Uh, the traditional way is to roll it in your hand, but a easier way to do it at your house is probably just to do it on a flat surface. So now I'm going to lift up on the bottom left tab, and this tab is going to come up and over the ingredients that we just placed into the hand roll. So this is going to come up and over and it's going to fold over and this corner right here is going to line up to the top part of the seaweed right where the rice and the seaweed meet. So it's going to line up right there and I'm just going to continue in that rolling motion, gently pressing to hold all the ingredients in place. And now once I get to the very end, the seaweed won't stick to itself. So kind of a, a cool little technique to do is uh, just you want to grab a couple grains of the sticky rice, place it right on that tab, and then you're going to kind of smudge it and smear it with your thumb so that way this will stick right onto the seaweed itself. 
So once you've done that, you have uh, successfully created a, what's called a tamaki in Japanese, and the translation would be hand roll. Um, and again, I really like these hand rolls. You can make a whole bunch of them uh, for party guests or just for your own personal use. And it's uh, just a really cool way to eat sushi itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a few more of these hand rolls um, uh, more fast, and I'm gonna plate them on a, on a platter just to kind of show you what, uh, what the different kinds of sushi hand rolls look like. So this one did have uh, some of the crab meat. I'll go ahead and make some vegetarian sushi hand rolls, and then I'll show you a good way to, uh, to plate and present the hand rolls. made four hand rolls relatively quickly. Um, I like to uh, serve the hand rolls on a uh, circular plate, that way I have a really nice presentation. And so as you can see, if, you ha if you're having a large party, it's, uh, it's a very good way to eat sushi. It, like I was saying, it is somewhat of an appetizer. Um, you can make a whole bunch of these uh, different types of hand rolls and have a beautiful uh, display and presentation. Again, they don't all have to be uh, different ingredients. They can contain just one vegetable or just one ingredient. And you can be creative with it too, kind of mixing and matching uh, different ingredients to create different types of sushi rolls. Uh, so this one was the California, and all of these were vegetarian sushi rolls. But again, it's totally up to you what you want to put inside of your hand roll. Next, what I'll be showing you is uh, how to make a sushi nigiri. And what that is, it's the, uh, it's the fish that's molded over the rice. Um, so in this case, we have the uh, Hawaiian tuna and the Atlantic salmon. So now if you look at the fish uh, very carefully, there's actually a lot of moisture that's on the outside. So we're gonna gently uh, pat the fish dry with a paper towel. And again, the raw fish is somewhat delicate, so you want to make sure that you're gentle when handling the fish. So we're just going to pat the outside dry real quick to remove that excess moisture. And once we do that, we're ready to, uh, to cut the fish so that we can make the sushi nigiri. Now you'll see that the fish has the uh, muscle lines. Um, just like any good beef, you want to cut against the grain uh, not with the muscle tissue. So when I'm cutting the fish, you'll notice that I'm cutting it in a very specific manner. Okay, so using my chef's knife, I need to create strips of fish uh, that will be molded over the rice. So in order for me to do that, I'm actually gonna remove the, the uh, bottom left corner of this block of tuna. I'm just gonna remove that from the rest of it. So now from here, I have a nice, smooth, even surface with the tuna, and I can literally just keep following that edge uh, to cut my nigiri strips. So again, using my chef's knife, using my opposite hand to brace the fish and to kind of hold the fish in place, so that way the fish doesn't shift around when I'm actually cutting the fish itself. So using my opposite hand to kind of hold the fish in place, I'm going to use the knife, start from the heel and work my way to the tip. And just come straight down and there is one piece of tuna for the nigiri. So again, my opposite hand is holding the fish. I'm gonna cut a few more pieces. And again, the, uh, the size of the, the fish that you're cutting doesn't have to be real big. Uh, the idea of sushi is that one piece of sushi is one bite. So if you're cutting a very big piece of fish, that piece of sushi will probably end up being two bites. So keep that in mind. When you're cutting the fish, it's pretty much gonna be bite-sized pieces. Okay, so I just showed you guys how to, uh, to cut the tuna for sushi. I'm gonna place that off to the side just for one moment, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the, uh, the Atlantic salmon now. And again, there is uh, some excess moisture on the salmon. I'm just gonna pat it dry with a paper towel.
So you can see with the Atlantic salmon, it's a little bit different than the tuna. The, uh, the center line of the salmon is still on the block of the salmon. So when we cut it, it's going to be a, a little bit of a different process for this one. Um, again, there's that center line, and that's a part that you usually don't want to eat or in, and that you don't want to serve. So we're going to go ahead and cut that center line right out. Um, you'll also notice that there is kind of like a, a brown edge on the salmon. Um, there's no harm in that, but it's just uh, not as appetizing to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of that uh, the, the brown color as well. I'm just going to use my chef's knife and just gently take off some of that some of that other salmon. So I'm left with just the nice orange uh, flesh right there. And again, so I know the center point is there. I'm going to cut that right out from the salmon. So I'm left with a nice uh, block of salmon. There's uh, none of the brown. Uh, None of the brown flesh on there, it's just the uh, meat itself. So from here, I'm ready to, uh, to cut the, uh, the nigiri slices again. So again, I'm going to be cutting at an angle. So I'm going to be removing the bottom left part of the salmon, and that way I can cut the uh, salmon into strips. Okay, so I'm going to remove that piece there. I'm just going to kind of keep working my way down um, again, holding the, uh, bracing the fish with my opposite hand, just kind of creating that, uh, that slice right down. So again, you want to keep the idea that one piece of sushi is one bite, so you don't want to make huge pieces uh, when you're cutting the fish. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to teach you how to make is the actual nigiri itself. Um, I just demonstrated how to properly cut the, the fish. Um, so now I'm going to go to, uh, to back to the sticky rice. So again, I'm going to really make sure that my hands are moist for this part. Um, and so now to make the, the nigiri itself, I'm going to get a ball of rice that's probably about the same size as a tater tot. So if you think of the shape and the size of a tater tot, that's the same shape and size that I want to make with a sushi. And again, if we think of tater tots, tater tots are bite-sized pieces. So again, you don't want to make anything too big where someone's going to have to break that piece in a half. Ready to move on to the fish? So I'm going to start with the tuna. If I'm right-handed, I'm going to place the fish on my right hand right like this. I'm going to take the tater tot shaped rice and I'm going to place it directly in the center of the fish. Then I'm going to uh, flip the fish over so that the fish is on top and the rice is on the bottom. But I'm going to do it on my opposite hand, just like that. Now we all know how to make the OK sign. So the OK sign is this. This uh, will allow you to mold the fish onto the rice and to really create the shape that we're looking for here. So making the OK sign, the O part is going to come up and over the fish and it's going to help mold that fish right onto the rice. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do it a few more times to really get the shape that I'm looking for. So again, the OK symbol, the O is going to come up and over the fish and mold right onto the rice. Do it a few more times. And that is a perfect piece of sushi nigiri. So again, I'll do this a few more times with the rest of the fish that I have. Um, and I'll just explain it quickly as I'm doing it here for you guys. Again, really damp hands. Gonna grab some rice and make a tater tot with it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, you just always wanna keep in mind that it should be bite size. Okay, I have my tater tot. I'm gonna grab the fish. I'm right-handed, so the fish is gonna go right in my right hand. The tater tot is going to go directly in the center of the fish. I'm going to flip it over onto my opposite hand. The OK symbol is going to come up and over the fish, and it's going to mold right onto the rice. And you don't want to do this too many times because you don't want your uh, body heat to transfer onto the fish. So you want to do this probably about three to four times maximum. Um, you really don't need to do any more than that to really get that shape that we're looking for.
Okay, so I have the tuna done. I'm gonna move on to the salmon here real quick. And it's just gonna be the same technique. Uh, nothing's gonna change as far as the rice or the size goes. Okay, so we're done making the nigiri. I'm gonna show you guys how to, um, to plate the nigiri in a way so that it'll be visually stunning uh, for your party guests or if it's just for your own personal use as well. So again, just like when I was making the California roll, I was uh, offsetting each piece, so that way it was very easy to be able to distinguish from piece to piece. So again, I offset all the pieces of the tuna, do the same thing with the, uh, with the salmon. So now also, if, you having a, if you're having a party come over, uh, the sushi nigiri is a really good way to go because you can really create a lot of uh, individual pieces of sushi which will allow your party guests to kind of pick and choose the piece that they want to eat. Um, and again, you can easily create a visually stunning display. Um, you can get all different types of fish. In this case, it's just the tuna and the salmon. And just even these two fish alone gives you a really good uh, presentation when you're plating the sushi.